Well, how are you? How's it? You look well. No, all that well, really. Why? What's the matter? Hangover. Cheers. How are you? I'm fine. Just like the old times. Hmm. It's been a long time. Yes. I thought of you the other day. Good God. Why? <laughs> Why? Well, it's nice sometimes to think back, isn't it? Absolutely. How's everything? Oh, utter bad. Do you know how long it is since we met? Well, uh, I came to that private view. Uh, no, sir. I don't mean that. Oh, you mean alone? Yes. Um, Two years. Yes, uh, thought it must be. Hmm. Long time. Yes, it is. How's it going? The gallery. How do you think it's going? Well, very well, I would say. I'm glad you think so. Well, it is, actually. I enjoy it. Funny lot. Painters, aren't they? It's not at all funny. Aren't they? What a pity. How's Robin? When did you last see him? I haven't seen him for months. Don't know why. Why? Why what? Why did you ask when I last saw him? I just wondered. Ask Sam. You mean Judith? Do I? You remember the form. I ask about your husband, you ask about my wife. Yes, uh, of course. How is your wife? All right. Sam must be tall. He is tall. Quite tall. There's a lot of running. He's a long-distance runner. He wants to be a zoologist. No, really? Good. And Sarah? She's ten. God, I suppose she must be. She must be, yes. Ned's five, isn't he? Remember? Well, I would. Remember that? Yes. You're all right, though. Oh, <laughs> yes, sure. Have you think of me? I don't need to think of you. Oh. I don't need to think of you. Anyway, I'm all right. How are you? Fine, really. All right. You're looking very pretty. Really? Thank you. I'm glad to see you. So am I. I mean, to see you. Think of me sometimes. I think of you sometimes. I, I saw Charlotte the other day. No. What? She didn't mention it. She didn't see me in the street. But you haven't seen her for years. Well, I recognize her. How could you? How could you know? I did. What did she look like? You. No, what did you think of her? Really? I thought she was lovely. Yes, she's very... She's smashing. She's 13. Do you remember that time? Oh, God, it was uh, when you picked her up and threw her up and got her. She was very light. She remembers that, you know. Really? Mm-hmm. Being thrown up. What a memory. She doesn't know about us, does she? Of course not. She just remembers you as an old friend. That's right. Yeah, um, everyone was there that day, uh, standing around. Your husband, my wife, all the kids. I remember. What day? Uh, 
when I threw her up, uh, it was in your kitchen. It was in your kitchen. Darling. Don't say that. It all... Seems such a long time ago. Does it? Same again. I thought of you the other day. He was driving through Kilburn. Suddenly I saw where I was. I just stopped. And then I turned down Kinsale Drive and drove into Wessex Grove. I drove past the house and then stopped about 50 yards further on. Like we used to do. Do you remember? Yes. People were coming out of that house. They walked up the road. What sort of people? Oh, young people. Then I got off the car and went up the stairs. I looked at the bells, you know. The names in the bells. I looked for our name. Green. Couldn't find it, eh? No. That's because we're not there anymore. We haven't been there for years. No, we haven't. I hear you're seeing a bit of Casey. What? Casey. <laughs> I, I just heard you were... Seeing a bit of him. Where did you hear that? Oh, people talking. Christ. The funny thing was that the only thing I really felt was irritation. I mean, irritation that nobody gossiped about us like that in the old days. <laughs> I nearly said, now look, she may be having the occasional drink with Casey. Who cares? But she and I had an affair for seven years and none of you bastards had the faintest idea it was happening. I wonder. I wonder if everyone knew all the time. Don't be silly. We were brilliant. Nobody knew. Whoever went to Kilburn in those days, anyway. Just you and me. Anyway, what's all this about you and Casey? What do you mean? What's going on? We have the occasional drink. I thought you didn't admire his work. <laughs> I've changed. His work has changed. Are you jealous? Uh, of what? <laughs> I couldn't be jealous of Casey. I'm his agent. I, I advised him about his divorce. I read all his first drafts. I persuaded your husband to publish his first novel. I, I scored him to Oxford to speak at the Union. He he's my... He's my boy. I discovered him when he was a poet, and <laughs> that's a pretty long time ago now. He even taken me down to Southampton to meet his mom and dad. I couldn't be jealous of Casey. A anyway, it's not as if we are having an affair now, is it? We haven't seen each other for years. Really? I'm very happy if you're happy. How's Robert? Well, I think we're going to subtract. Oh. We had a long talk last night. Last night? You know what I found out? He's been treating me for years. He's had other women for years. No. Good Lord. But we betrayed him for years. He betrayed me for years. Well, I never knew that. Then would I? Does Casey know about this? I wish you wouldn't keep calling him Casey. His name is Roger. Yes. Roger. I phoned you. I don't know why. <laughs> what a funny thing. We were such close friends, weren't we? Robert and me. 
even though know, I haven't seen him for a few months. But through all those years, all the drinks, all the lunches, we had together that. I never even gleaned. I never suspected that there was anyone else in his life but you. Never. For example, when you're with a fellow in a pub or a restaurant, for example, from time to time he pops out for a piss. You see, who doesn't? But, but what I mean is, if he's making a crafty telephone call, you can sort of sense it. Well, I never did that with Robert. He never made any crappy telephone calls in any pub I was ever with him in there. <laughs> the funny thing is that it was me who made the calls. To you. When I left him boozing at the bar. That's the funny thing. When did he tell you all this? Last night. I think we were up all night. You talked all night? Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I didn't come into it, did I? What? I just, you know. I just phoned you this morning, you know. That's all. Because I... Because we're all friends. I've been up all night. The whole thing's finished. I suddenly felt I wanted to see you. Well, look. I'm happy to see you. I am. I'm sorry about... Do you remember? I mean, you do remember. I remember. You couldn't really afford Wessex through when you took it, could you? Oh, love finds a way. I bought the curtains. You found a way. Listen, I didn't want to see you for nostalgia, I mean. What's the point? I just wanted to see how you were, truly. How are you? Oh, what does it matter? You didn't tell Robert about me last night, did you? I had to. He told me everything. I told him everything. We were up all night. At one point, Ned came down. I had to take him up back to bed, put him back to bed. Then I went down again. I think it was the voices that woke him up. You know. You told him everything. I had to. You told him everything? About us? I had to. And he's my oldest friend. I mean, I picked his own daughter up in my own arms and threw her up and caught her. In my kitchen. He watched me do it. It doesn't matter. It's... All gone. Is it? What has? It's all. All over. It's good of you to come. Not at all. Yes, yes. Uh, I know it was difficult. I know uh, the kids. It's all right. It sounded urgent. <laughs> you found someone, did you? What? For the kids. Yes, yes. Honestly, everything's in order. Anyway, Charlotte's not a baby. No. Are you going to sit down? Well, I might, yes. In a minute. Judith's at the hospital. Uh, on night duty. The kids are uh, here. Upstairs. Uh-huh. I must speak to you. It's important. Speak. Yes, uh,
they look quite rough. What's the trouble? It's not about you and Emma, is it? I know all about that. Yes, uh, so I've been told. Ah, well, it's not very important, is it? We know for years, has it? Been? It is important. Really? Why? I thought I was going to go mad. When? This evening. Just now. Wondering whether to phone you. I had to phone you. It took me two hours to phone you. And then you were with the kids. I thought I wasn't going to be able to see you. I, I thought I'd go mad. I'm very grateful to you oh, for, for coming. Sake. Jerry, what exactly do you want to say? I don't know why she told you. I don't know how she could tell you. I just don't understand. Listen, I know you've got... Look, I saw her today. We had a drink. I haven't seen her for... She told me, you know, that you're in trouble. Both of you. Uh, and so on. I know that. I, I mean, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Why not? <laughs> fact is, I can't understand why she thought it necessary um, after all these years to tell you so suddenly last night Last without night. consulting me, without even warning me. Uh, after all, you she and didn't me... tell me last night. What do you mean? I know about last night. Uh, sh she told me about it. You were up all night, weren't you? That's correct. And she told you. Um, Last night. About her and me. Did she not? No, she didn't. She didn't tell me about you and her last night. She told me about you and her four years ago. So she didn't have to tell me again last night. Because I knew. And she knew I knew because she told me herself. Four years ago. What? I think I was it now. I thought you knew. Knew what? That I knew. That I've known for years. I thought you knew that. You thought I knew? She said you didn't. But I didn't believe that. Anyway, I think I thought you knew. But you say you did. She told you uh, when? Well, I found out. That's what happened. I told her that I found out and then she confirmed the facts. When? A long time ago, Jerry. But we've seen each other a great deal over the last four years. We've had lunch. You never played squash, though. I was your best friend. Well, yes, sure. Oh. Don't get upset. There's no point. Why didn't she tell me? I'm not an old boy. Why didn't you tell me? 
I thought you might know. But you didn't know for certain, did you? You didn't know? No. Then why didn't you tell me? Tell you what? That you knew, you bastard! Oh, don't call me a bastard, Jerry. What are we going to do? You and I aren't going to do anything. My marriage is finished. I've just got to make some proper arrangements, that's all. About the children. You hadn't thought of telling Judith? Telling Judith what? Oh, about you and Emma. You mean she never knew? Are you quite sure? No, I hadn't thought of telling Judith actually. You don't seem to understand. You don't seem to understand that I don't give a shit about any of this. It's true. I've hit Emma once or twice. But that wasn't to defend a principle. I wasn't inspired to do it from any kind of moral standpoint. I just felt like giving it a good bashing. The old ditch. You understand. But you betrayed her for years. Oh. Didn't you? Yes. And she never knew about it, did she? Didn't she? I didn't. No, you didn't know very much about anything really, did you? No. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, I did. I lived with her. Yes. In the afternoons. Sometimes very long ones. For seven years. Yes, you certainly know all there is to know about that. About the seven years of afternoons. I don't know anything about that. I hope she looked after you all right. We used to like each other. We still do. I bumped into old Casey the other day. I believe he's having an affair with my wife. We haven't played squash for years, Casey and me. We used to have a damn good game. He's put on weight. Yes. I thought that. He's over the hill. Is he? Don't you think so? In what respect? His work. His books. Oh, his books. Mm, his art. Yes. His art does seem to be falling away, doesn't it? Still sells. Oh, sells very well. <laughs> sells very well indeed. Very good for us, for you and me. Yes. Someone was telling me. Who was it? Must have been someone in the public department, I suppose. The other day, that when Casey went up to York to sign his latest book in a bookshop. You know, with Barbara Spring. The pop is cute for us to get his signature on his book. While one old lady and a dog queue to get Barbara Spring's signature on her book. I happen to think that Barbara Spring is good, don't you? Yes. Still, we both do very well out of Casey, don't we? Very well. Have you read any good books lately? I've been reading Yeats. Ah, Yeats. Yes. You read Yates on Torcello once. On Torcello? 
Don't you remember? Uh, years ago, you went over to Tarcello in the dawn, alone. And that hit. So I did. I told you that. Yes. Yes. Where are you going this summer? You and the family? The Lake District. What do you want to do then? I don't quite know what we're doing anymore. That's all. Mm. I mean, this black. Yes. Can you actually remember when we were last here? In the summer, was it? Well, was it? I know it seemed like... It was I... the beginning of September. <laughs> well... That summer, isn't it? It was actually extremely cold. It was early autumn. It, it's pretty cold now. So you're going to get another electric fire? Yes, uh, I never got that. Not much point in getting it if we are never here. We're here now. Not really. Well, things have changed. You've been so busy, uh, your job and everything. Well, I know. But I mean, I like it. I want to do it. No, it, it's great. It's marvelous for you. But you're not... If you're running a gallery, you've got to run it. You've got to be there. But you're not free in the afternoons. Are you? No. So how can we meet? But look at the times you are out of country. You are never here. But when I am here, you know, in the afternoons. So we can never meet. We can meet for lunch. We can meet for lunch, but we can't come all the way out here for a quick lunch. <laughs> Too old for that. I didn't suggest that. You see, in the past, we were inventive. We were determined. It was... It seemed impossible to meet. Impossible. And yet we did. We met here, we took this flat, and we met in this flat because we wanted to. It would not matter how much we wanted to if you're not free in the afternoons and I'm in America. Nights have always been out of the question. And you know it. I have a family. I have a family too. I know that perfectly well. <laughs> but I remind you that your husband is my oldest friend. What do you mean by that? I don't mean anything by it. But what are you trying to say by saying that? Jesus, I'm, I'm not trying to say anything. I, I've said precisely what I wanted to say. I see. The fact is that in the old days we used our imagination and we take a night and make an arrangement or go to an hotel. Yes, we did. Well, that was in the main before we got this flat. We haven't spent many nights in this flat. No. Not many nights anywhere, really. K. 
can you afford to keep it going month after month? Oh. It's a waste. But it comes here. I just can't bear to think about it, actually. Just empty. All day and night. Day after day and night after night. I mean, the crockery and the curtains and the bedspread and everything. And the difficult I watch from Venice. It's ridiculous. It's just an empty home. It's not a home. I know. I know what you wanted. But it could never actually be a home. You have a home. I have a home. With curtains, etc. And children. Two children in two homes. There are no children here. So it's not the same kind of home. It was never intended to be the same kind of home, was it? You didn't ever see it as a home, in any sense, did you? No. You saw it as a flat. You know? For fucking. No, for loving. Well, there's not much of that left, is there? I don't think we don't love each other. Huh, well. What will you do about all the furniture? What? The contents. You know, we can do something very simple. We want to do it. Sell it to Mrs. Banks for a small sum in. She can let it as a furnished flat. That's right. Wasn't the bed here? What? Wasn't it? Bought the bed. Everything. Bought the bed together. Ah. Oh. Yes. You'll make all the arrangements then, Mrs. Banks. I don't want anything. What I can put it, you see. I have a home. Tablecloths and all the rest of it. I'll go into it. With Mrs. Bank. There'll be a few quid, you know, so... No, I don't want any cash. Thank you very much. I'm going now. Oh, he's my key. Oh, Christ. Take it off. Can you do it, please? I'm picking up Charlotte from school. Taking up shopping. Do you realize this is an afternoon? It's the galleries, afternoon off. That's why I'm here. Close every Thursday afternoon. Can I have my key ring? Thanks. Listen. I think we've made absolutely the right decision. Emma, Jerry's here. Who? Jerry. I'll be down. Cheers. Cheers. She's just putting Ned to bed. I should think he'll be off in a minute. Uh, off where? 
dreamland. Ah. Yes. Um, how was your sleep these days? What? You still have bad nights? With Ned, I mean. Oh, I see. Well, no. No, it's getting better. But you know what to say. What? They say boys are worse than girls. Worse? Babies. They say boy babies cry more than girl babies. Do they? You didn't find that to be the case. Uh, yes, uh, I think we did. Did you? Yes. What do you make of it? Why do you think that is? <laughs> well, I suppose... Uh, boys are more anxious. <laughs> boy babies? Yes. What the hell are they anxious about? At their age. Do you think? Well... Facing the world, I suppose. Leaving the womb, all that. But what about girl babies? They leave the womb too. That's true. <laughs> it's also true that nobody talks much about girl babies leaving the womb, do they? I'm prepared to do so. I see. Well, what have you got to say? I was asking you a question. What was it? Why do you assert that boy babies find leaving the womb more of a trouble than girl babies? Have I made such an assertion? You went on to make a further assertion to the effect that babies are more anxious about facing the world than girl babies. Do you yourself believe that to be the case? I do, yes. Why do you think it is? I have no answer. Do you think uh, it might have something to do with the difference between the sexes? Good God, you're right. That must be it. Hello? Surprise! I was having tea with Casey. Where? Just around the corner. I thought he lived in Hampstead or somewhere. You're out of date. Am I? He's left, Susanna. He's living alone, down the corner. Oh. Writing a novel about a man who leaves his wife and three children and goes to live alone on the other side of London. To write a novel about a man who leaves his wife and three children. I hope it's better than the last one. The last one? Ah, the last one. Was it that the one about a man who lived in a big house in Hampstead with his wife and three children and was writing a novel Why about... Why didn't you like it? The two of you, actually. I think it's the best thing he's written. Maybe the best thing he's written? It's just bloody dishonest. Dishonest? In what way, dishonest? I've told you, actually. Have you? Yes, she has. Once we were all having dinner, I remember you, me, Emma and Judith. Where was it? Emma gave a dissertation of the pudding about dishonesty in Casey with reference to his last novel. Drying out. It was more stimulating. Judith had to leave, unfortunately, in the middle of it for her night shift at the hospital. How should, by the way? Very well. When are we going to play squash? You're too good. Not at all. I'm not good at all. I'm just fitter than you. But why? Why are you fitter than me? Because I play squash. Oh, you're playing regularly. Mm-hmm. With whom? Casey, actually. Casey? Good lord. What's he like? He's a brutally honest squash player. But no, really. We haven't played for years. We must play. You're rather good. Yes, I was quite good. All right. I'll give you a ring. <laughs> Why don't you? We'll make a date. Right. Yes, we must do that. And then I'll take you to lunch. No, no, I'll, I'll take you to lunch. The man who wins buys the lunch. Can I watch? What? Why can't I watch and then take you both to lunch? Well, to be brutally honest, we wouldn't actually want a woman around there, would we, Jeru? I mean, a game of squash isn't simply a game of squash. It's rather more than that. You see, first day's the game, 
and then there's the shower, and then there's the pint, and then there's the lunch. After all, you've been at it, you've had your battle. What you want is your pint and your lunch. You really don't want a woman buying you lunch. You don't actually want a woman with a mile of that place or any of those places, really. You don't want her in the squash coat. You don't want her in the shower or the pub or the restaurant. You see, at lunch, you want to talk about squash or cricket or books or even women with your friend and be able to warm up to your theme without the fear of uh, improper interruption. Yeah, that's what it's all about. What do you think, Jerry? I haven't played squash uh, for years. Well, let's play next week. I can't. Next week. I'm in New York. Are you? I'm going over with one of my more celebrated writers, actually. Who? Casey. Someone wants to film that novel of his you didn't like. We're going over to discuss it. It was a question of them coming over here or us going over there. Casey thought he deserved the trip. What about you? What? Do you deserve the trip? Judith going. No, uh, he can't go alone. We'll have that game of squash when I get back. Uh, it'll be out of the most 10 days. Lovely. Bye. Toshala tomorrow, isn't it? What? We're going to Toshala tomorrow, aren't we? Yes, that's right. That'd be lovely. Hmm. Can't wait. Book good? Mm hmm. Yes. What is it? Ah, oh, this new book. This man, Sphinx. Oh, that. Jerry was telling me about it. Cherry, where is he? He was telling me about it at lunch last week. Really? Does he like it? Sphinx is his boy. He discovered him. Oh, I didn't know that. Unsolicited manuscript. You think it's good, do you? Yes, I do. I'm enjoying it. Jerry thinks it's good too. You should have lunch with us one day and chat about it. Is that absolutely necessary? It's not good as all that. You mean it's not good enough for you to have lunch with Jerry and me and chat about it? What the hell are you talking about? I must read it again myself. Now it's in hard covers. Again? Jerry wanted us to publish it. Oh, really? Well, naturally. Anyway, I turned him down. Why? Oh, uh, not much more to say on the subject, really, is there? What do you consider the subject to be? Betrayal? No, it isn't. Isn't it? What is it then? I haven't finished it yet. I'll let you know. Well, do let me know. Of course, I could be thinking of the wrong book. Hmm. 
By the way, I went into American Express yesterday. Oh. Yes, I went to cash and travelers checks. Well, you get a much better rate there, you say, than you do in a hotel. Oh, do you? No, oh, yes. Anyway, <laughs> there was a letter there for you. They asked me if you and I were in any relation, and I said yes. So they asked me if I wanted to take it. <laughs> I mean, they gave it to me. But I said no, I'd leave it. Did you get it? Yes. I suppose you popped in when you were out shopping yesterday evening. That that's right. Oh, well. Glad you got it. To be honest, I was amazed. They suggested I take it. It could never happen in England, but these Italians are oh, so free and easy. I mean, just because my name is down, Sam. Your name is Downs. Doesn't mean we are the Mr. and Mrs. Downs that they in the laughing Mediterranean way as you we are. We could be, and in fact, are vastly more likely to be total strangers. So let's say I, whom they laughingly assume to be your husband, had taken the letter, having declared myself to be your husband, but in truth being the total stranger, and opened it and read it out of nothing more than idle curiosity, and then thrown it in a cloud. You would have never received it. and would have been deprived of your legal right to open your own mail and all of this because of venetian gemo fetisma i've got a good mind to write about this to the doge of venice that's what stopped me from taking it by the way and bringing it to you the thought that i could very easily be a total stranger what they of course did not know and had no way of knowing was that i'm your husband to the inefficient bunch yeah only in the laughing mediterranean it was from jerry yes i recognize the handwriting i was you okay good and you did fine what about the kids i don't think he mentioned Uh, they probably were right then. If they were ill or something, you would have mentioned it. Any other news? No. Are you looking forward to Torcello? How many times have we been to Torcello? Twice. I remember how you loved it the first time I took you there. You fell in love with it. That was about ten years ago, six months after we were married. Yes. Do you remember? I wonder if you like it as much tomorrow. What do you think of Jerry as a letter writer? <laughs> You're trembling. Are you cold? No. He used to write to me too at one time. Long letters about Ford, Marx, Ford. I used to write to him too. Come to think of it, um, letters about W. B. Yeats, I suppose. That was the time when we were both editors of poetry magazines. Him at Cambridge and me at Oxford. Did you know that? We were bright young men, and close friends. We still are close friends. All that was long before I met you. Long before he met you. I've been trying to remember when I introduced him to you. I simply can't remember. I take it I did introduce him to you. Yes. But when? Can you remember? No. You can't. No. How odd. He wasn't the best man at our wedding, was he? You no, know he was. Ah, yes. Well, that's probably when I introduced him to you. Was there any message for me in his letter? I mean, in the line of business, to do with the world of publishing, has he discovered any new and original talent? He's quite talented at discovering new talent. Old Jerry. No message. No message. Not even his love. For lovers. Ah, yes. 
I thought it must be something like that. Something along those lines. When? What? When did you think? Yesterday. Only yesterday. When I was when uh, I saw his handwriting on the letter. Before yesterday I was quite ignorant. <sighs> Sorry. Sorry. Where does it take place? Must be a bit awkward. I mean, we've got two kids. He's got two kids. Not to mention a wife. We have a flat. Oh, I see. Nice. A flat. It's quite well established in your uh, affairs. Yes. How long? Sometime. Yes, but how long exactly? Five years. Five years. That is when you wrote. Did you hear what I said? Yes. He's your son. Cherry was in America for two months. Did he write to you from America? Of course. And I wrote to him. Did you tell him that Ned had been conceived? Not by letter. But when you did tell him, was he happy to know that I was to be a father? I've always liked Cherry, to be honest. I've always liked him rather more than I've liked you. Maybe I should have had an affair with him myself. Tell me, are you looking forward to a trip to Torcello? Darling. Darling. I must put this down. What's in it? Lunch. What? Things you like. How do I look? Beautiful. Do I look well? You do? How was it? It is lovely. <laughs> Did you go to Tarcello? No. Why not? Oh, I don't know. The speed boats were on strike or something. On strike? Yes, the day we were going. Ah. What about the gondolas? You can't take a gondola to Torcello. Well, they used to, in the old days. Didn't they? Uh, before they had speed boats. Uh, how do you think they got over there? To take cars. Yes. I suppose so. I got your letter. Good. Get mine? Of course. Miss me? <laughs> yes. Actually, uh, I haven't been well. What? Oh, nothing. A bug. I missed you. You haven't been here at all. No. Needs hovering. Later. I spoke to Robert this morning. Oh. I'm uh, taking him to lunch on Thursday. Thursday? Why? Well, it's my turn. No, I meant, why are you taking him to lunch? Because it's my turn. Uh, <laughs> last time he took me to lunch. You know what I mean. No. Uh, what? What is the subject or point of your lunch? Not subject or point. Uh, we've just been doing it for years. His turn followed by my turn. You've misunderstood me. Have I? Oh. Well, quite simply put, we often do meet or have lunch to discuss a particular writer or a particular book, aren't you? 
So to those meetings, so let's just that is the point of the subject. Well, there isn't to this one. Kevin discovered any new writers while I've been away. No. Oh. Sam fell off his bike. No. He was knocked out. He was out for about a minute. Are you with him? No, Judith. He's all right. And then I got this bug. Oh dear. So I've had time for nothing. Everything will be better now. I'm back. Yes. Oh, I that that's Binks. The book you gave me. What do you think? Excellent. Robert hated it. He he wouldn't publish it. What's he like? Who? Spinks. Spinks. <laughs> yes. Um, he's a very thin bloke. Fifty. Wears dark glasses day and night. Uh, he lives alone in a furnished room. <laughs> Quite like this one, actually. Furnished room suit him. Yes. This suit me too. And you? Do you still like it at home? It's marvelous not to have a telephone. It's marvelous to have me. Yeah, you're all right. I cook and sleep for you. You do. I bought something in Venice um, for the house. Do you like it? It's lovely. Do you think we'll ever go to Venice together? No, probably not. You don't think I should see Robert for lunch on Thursday? Or on Friday, for that matter. Why do you say that? You don't think I should see him at all? I didn't say that. How can you not see him at all? Don't be silly. I had a terrible panic when you were away. Uh, I was sorting out a contract in my office with some lawyers. I suddenly couldn't remember what I'd done with your letter. I couldn't remember putting it in the safe. I said I had to go look for something in the safe, and I opened the safe. It wasn't there. <laughs> I had to go on with the damn contract. I I kept seeing it lying somewhere in the house, being picked up. Did but... you find it? <laughs> it was in the pocket of a jacket, in my wardrobe, at home. God. Something else. Uh... Happened a few months ago. I didn't tell you. We had a drink one evening. Well, we had our drink, and I got home about eight. Walked in the door. Judith said, "Hello, you're a bit late." Sorry, I said. I was having a drink with Spinks. Spinks, she said. How odd. He's just phoned five minutes ago. Wanted to speak to you. He didn't mention he'd just seen you. You know, old Sphinx. I said, not exactly forthcoming, is he? He probably remembered something he'd meant to say, but hadn't. I'll ring him later. I went up to see the kids, and then we all had dinner. Listen, uh, do you remember? <laughs> it was it a few years ago. We were all in your kitchen. Must have been Christmas or something. Do you remember? All the kids were running about, and suddenly I picked Charlotte up and lifted her high up, uh, high up, and then down and up. Do you remember how much she laughed? Everyone laughed. She was so light, and there was your husband and my wife and all the kids all standing and laughing in your kitchen. I can't get rid of it. To see our kitchen, actually. Why shouldn't you throw it up?
Hello, Robert. Hello. Uh, I'd like a uh, scotch on the rocks. With water. What? You want it with water. No, no water. Just on the rocks. Certainly, signore. Scotch? You don't usually drink scotch at lunchtime. <laughs> I've had a bug, actually. Ah. And the only thing to get into this bug was scotch. At lunchtime as well as at night. So, I'm still drinking scotch at lunchtime in case it comes back. Like an apple a day. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. The menus, senor. How are you? Apart from the pub. Fine. Ready for some squash? When I'm brought into the bug? Yes. I thought you had got rid of it. Why do you think I'm still drinking squash at lunchtime? Oh, yes. We really must play. We haven't played together in years. How old are you now, then? 36. That means I'm 36 as well. If you're a day. A bit violent. Squash. Ring me. We'll have a game. How was Venice? Ready to order, signori. What do you have? I'll have melone and uh, piccata al limone with the green salad. Insalate verde. Prosciutto e melone? No, just melone. Um, on the rocks? I'll have prosciutto and melone, fried scampi and spinach. E spinach. Grazie, signori. And a bottle of Cova Bianco straight away. Si, signore. Molte grazie. Is he the one who's always been here? Or is it his son? You mean, has his son always been here? No, uh, is he his son? I, I mean, is he the son of the one who's always been here? No. He's his father. Ah, is he? He's the one who speaks wonderful Italian. Yes. Your Italian is pretty good, isn't it? No, not at all. Yes, it is. No. It's Emma's Italian, which is very good. Emma's Italian is very good. Is it? Uh, I didn't know that. Corvo Bianco, signore. Thank you. How was it? Anyway, Venice. Venice, signore. Beautiful life. A most beautiful place of Italy. You see that painting on the wall? It's Venice. So it is. You know what is none of in Venice? What? Traffico. Cheers. Cheers. When were you last there? Oh, yes. How should it? What? Oh, you know. Okay. Busy. And the kids? All right. Sam fell off. What? Uh, no, no. Nothing. So, how is it? You used to go there with Judith, didn't you? Yes, but we haven't been there for years, really. Uh, how about Charlotte? Did she enjoy it? I think she did. I did. Good. I went for a trip to Torcello. Oh, really? Uh, lovely place. Incredible day. I got up very early and boom, right across the lagoon to Torchal. Not a soul stirring. What's the whoop? Speedboat. Oh, I thought... What? <laughs> it's so long ago, I'm obviously wrong. I, I thought one went to Torchal by gondola. It would take hours. No, no. Vomp across the lagoon in the dawn. Yes, uh, sounds good. I was quite alone. Where was Emma? I think asleep. Ah. I was alone for hours, as a matter of fact. On the island. High point, actually, of the whole trip. Was it? Uh, well, it, it sounds marvelous. Yes. Um, I sat on the grass and read Yates. Yates, on Torcello. They went well together. 
un melone, un prosciutto e melone. Un prosciutto for me. Buon appetito. Am I read that novel of the Chamafields? What's his name? Uh, I don't know. Uh, what? Sphinx. Oh, Sphinx. Yes, yes. Uh, the one you didn't like. The one I wouldn't publish. I remember. Did Emma like it? She seemed to be madly in love with it. Good. You like it yourself, do you? I do. And it's very successful? It is. Tell me. Do you think that makes me a publisher of unique critical judgment or a foolish publisher? A foolish publisher. I agree with you. I'm a very foolish publisher. No, you're not. Uh, what are you talking about? You're a good publisher. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm a bad publisher because I hate books. Or to be precise, prose. But to be even more precise, modern prose. Modern novels, first novels, second novels. All that promise and sensibility it forced upon me to judge. To put the firm's money on it, then to push for the third novel. See it done. See the dust jacket done. See the dinner for national literary editors done. See signing in hatchets done. See the lucky author cook himself to death, all in the name of literature. You know what you and Emma have in common? Hmm? You love literature. I mean, you love modern French literature. I mean, you love the new novel by the new Casey or Springs. It gives you both such a thrill. You must be pissed. Really? You mean you don't think it gives Emma a thrill? How do I know? Uh, she's your wife. Yes. Yes, you're quite right. I shouldn't have to consult you. I shouldn't have to consult anyone. I'd like some more wine. Yes, yes. Waiter, another bottle of Cabo Bianco. And where's our lunch? This place is going to pot. Mind you, it's worse in Venice. They really don't give a fuck there. I'm not drunk. You can't get drunk at Cabo Bianco. Uh, mind you, last night, um, I was up late. I hate that. It stinks of modern literature. No, no. Oh, I'm sorry. Corvo Bianco. Same glass. Where's our lunch? It comes. I'll pour. No, look, I'm sorry. Have another drink. I'll tell you what it is. It's just that I can't bear being back in London. I was happy. Such a rare thing. Not in Menace, I don't mean that. I mean on Torcello. When I walked about Torcello in the early morning, alone, I was happy. I wanted to stay there forever. We all... Yes, we all feel that sometimes. Oh, you do yourself, do you? <laughs> I mean, there's nothing really wrong, you see. I've got the family. Emma and I are very good together. I think the world of her. And I actually consider Casey to be a first-rate writer. Do you, really? First-rate? I'm proud to publish him when you discovered him. That was very clever of you. Thanks. You got a good nose and you care. I respect that in you. So does Emma. We often talk about it. How is Emma? Oh, very well. You must come and have a drink sometime. She'd love to see you.
Hello. Hello. I've only just got here. I went to be here ages ago. I'm making this stew. The PRs. Are you starving? Yes. So, really, I'll never do it. You sit down. I'll get it on. What a lovely apron. Good. What have you been doing? Just walk through the park. What was it like? Beautiful. Empty. A slight mist. I sat down for a bit, under a tree. It was very quiet. I just looked at the serpent dean. And then? Then I got a taxi to Vessis Grove, number 31. And I climbed the steps and opened the front door, and then climbed the stairs and opened this door, and found you, in a new apron, cooking a stew. It's on. Which is now on. Vodka? At lunchtime? I just feel like one. I ran into Judith yesterday. Did she tell you? No, she didn't. Where? Lunch. Lunch? She didn't tell you. No. That's funny. What do you mean, lunch? Uh, where? The Gino's. Gino's? What the hell was she doing at Gino's? Having lunch with a woman. A woman? Yes. Gino's is a long way from the hospital. Of course it isn't. Well, I suppose not. And you? Me? What were you doing at Gino's? Having lunch with my sister. Ah. Judith didn't tell you. I haven't really seen her. I was out. Late last night? With Casey. And she was out early this morning. Do you think she knows? Knows? Does she know about us? <laughs> no. Are you sure? She's too busy. At the hospital. And then the kids. She doesn't go in for speculation. But what about clues, though? Isn't she interested uh, in follow clues? What clues? Well, there must be some. Available to her. To pick up. There are none. Available to her. Oh. Well, good. She has an admirer. Surely. Another doctor. <laughs> he takes her for drinks. It's irritating. I mean, she says that's all there is to it. He likes her, she's fond of him, etc., etc. Perhaps that's what I find irritating. I don't know exactly what's going on. Oh. Why shouldn't she have an admirer? I have an admirer. Who? Oh. oh, Q, I think. Ah, yes. More than that. Tell me, have you ever thought about changing your life? Changing? Hmm? It's impossible. Do you think she's being unfaithful to you? No, I don't know. When you were in America, just now, for instance? No. Have you ever been unfaithful? To whom? To me, of course. 
No. Have you? To me? No. If she was, what would you do? She isn't. She's busy. She's got lots to do. She's a very good doctor. She likes her life. She loves the kids. Uh. She loves me. Uh. All that means something. It certainly does. But I adore you. I adore you. Yes. Listen, there's something I have to tell you. What? I'm pregnant. It was when you were in America. It wasn't anyone else. It was my husband. Yes, yes, of course. I'm very happy for you. Good God. I've been waiting for you. What do you mean? I knew you'd come. I'm just coming to comb my hair. I knew you'd have to. I knew you'd have to comb your hair. I knew you'd have to get away from the party. You're a beautiful hostess. Aren't you enjoying the party? You're beautiful. Listen, I've been watching you all night. I must tell you. I want to tell you. I have to tell you. Please. You're incredible. You're drunk. Nevertheless. <gasps> Jerry. I was the best man at your wedding. I saw you in white. I watched you glide by. In white. I wasn't in white. You know what should have happened? What? I should have had you. In your white. Before the wedding. I should have blackened you. In your white wedding dress. Blackened you in your bridal dress. Before ushering you into your wedding. As your best man. My husband's best man. If best friends, best man. No. Your best man. I must get back. You're lovely. <laughs> I'm crazy about you. All these words I'm using, don't you see? They've never been said before. Can't you see? I'm crazy about you. It's a whirlwind. Have you ever been to the Sahara Desert? Listen to me. It's true. Listen. 
You overwhelm me. You're so lovely. You're so beautiful. I'm not. Look at the way you look at me. I'm not looking at you. Look at the way you're looking at me. I can't wait for you. I'm bowled over. I'm totally knocked out. You dazzle me. You jewel. My jewel. I can't ever sleep again. No, listen. It's the truth. I won't walk. I'll be a cripple. I'll descend. I'll diminish. Into total paralysis. My life is in your hands. <laughs> That's what you're banishing me to. The state of Catatonia. Do you know the state of Catatonia? Do you? Do you? The state of... <laughs> well, the reigning prince is the prince of emptiness. The prince of absence. The prince of desolation. I love you. My husband is at the other side of that door. Everyone knows. The world knows. It knows. <laughs> but they'll never know. They'll never know. They're in a different world. I adore you. I'm madly in love with you. I can't believe that what anyone at this moment is saying has ever happened, has ever happened. Nothing has ever happened. Nothing. This is the only thing that has ever happened. Your eyes kill me. I'm lost. You're so wonderful. Oh. Yes. Your best friend is drunk. As you are, my best and oldest friend. And, in the present instance, my host. I decided to take this opportunity to tell your wife how beautiful she was. Quite right. It is quite right to, to face up to the facts. And to offer a token, without blush. A token of one's unalloyed appreciation. No holds barred. Absolutely. And how wonderful for you that this is so. That this is the case. That her beauty is the case. Quite right. I speak as your oldest friend. Your best man. You are, actually. <laughs>